you know, when I was in practice for 30 years, I would say nearly 100% of every single person who could not sleep, especially the ones that had chronic sleeping issues, always had gut issues. Either they had irritable bowel syndrome or celiac or Crohn's or diverticulitis or heartburn or bloating or indigestion. Something was going on in the stomach. And this is probably why when people take probiotics before bed, they sleep better. So today I'm going to talk about the link between your digestion and your sleeping and give you some tips on how to improve your sleeping. I've done a lot of videos on sleeping, especially um, related to light and how that affects the circadian rhythms, how it can either stimulate or inhibit sleep, depending on how much fluorescent light or LED light that you're exposed to. So if you haven't seen that video, that would be also very important. I'll put that link down below. But you have this um, clock in your brain, the suprachiasmic nuclei, or you might want to pronounce it suprachiasmic. I'm not even sure how do you pronounce it exactly. But there's a clock in your brain that regulates uh, your sleep patterns. And that clock uses as its main hormone something called melatonin. And so the question is, how do you get enough melatonin to make this clock work correctly? Should you just take it as a supplement? And I don't recommend that because anytime you take a hormone, you really are treating the symptom. You're not getting rid of the cause. And I want to know what's really underneath the deficiency of melatonin. Also, when you take hormones, you inactivate the gland that makes them. So there's several ways that melatonin is created. Melatonin comes from another hormone called serotonin. And 90% of all the serotonin in your body is made with help from your friendly bacteria. So these microbes help you in so many different ways. They actually take tryptophan, which is amino acid, and they convert that to serotonin. And this is probably why um, people take L-tryptophan as a supplement to help them sleep. And the reason it does help you because it converts to serotonin, which then converts to melatonin. Now, if you ever take tryptophan to help you sleep, always take it on an empty stomach because if you take it with food, protein from that food will block um, the absorption of tryptophan. So you want to take it on an empty stomach. And yes, it does work pretty good. Now, tryptophan also works for anxiety as well. And what's fascinating is that it was used uh, long ago, I don't know, 20 plus years ago for um, depression and I mean, so many people were using it. And all of a sudden, there was this contamination, I think, if I'm not mistaken, in China or Japan. And this created a scare where um, the FDA took it off the market. And coincidentally, a new remedy the next week came into being for depression and anxiety. And that was Prozac. I just find that a very interesting coincidence, right? But what I think that's even more of a coincidence is that um, tryptophan came back on the market. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was allowed back on the market uh, right when the patents ran out for Prozac. I could be wrong, but I could be right on that. So we have tryptophan that turns into serotonin, that turns into melatonin with the help of your microbes. And this is why one of the side effects from taking an antibiotic produces insomnia. Your sleep is disturbed. Now, to make tryptophan work, you also need vitamin B6. If someone is deficient in B6, the conversion of tryptophan to serotonin just won't occur. And um, this is why people that have a B6 deficiency also have insomnia. So I'm just kind of giving you the pathway of what can occur and the great importance of your microbiome, which is collectively all the friendly bacteria and the friendly yeast and friendly other organisms that help you. In fact, the microbiome is considered another organ that you have. You're dependent on it. You cannot live without it. You're not going to be able to sleep without your microbes. And so if you have sleeping problems, this is another important focus. Focus on your gut microbiome and do things to improve it. In fact, you might want to take a probiotic. You might want to watch my video on uh, taking kefir before bed or at least later in the day to help you sleep because it's a great remedy. But you can also use kimchi or sauerkraut and that can help you. 
Now these microbes also consume fiber. And I also personally find that if I don't consume like a salad, my sleep isn't as good. So I do find that fiber from salad does help me sleep. Other people with gut issues might find that fiber not helpful. They would probably sleep better without it. But if you don't have a gut issue, it might help you because also the vegetables have the potassium and magnesium that does help sleep. The other really important thing I want to mention uh, in this video is that if you are doing fasting, okay, um, in the past, I've recommended certain patterns of fasting. Let's say you're going to do, um, I don't know, 18 and six, you're going to fast for 18 hours and you're going to, your eating window is six hours, but the time of when you eat can greatly affect your sleep as well. There's some new information, which I've done a video on, which I will put down below, that basically states that if you shift your eating window to earlier in the day, which opposes what I've been recommending, but you might want to try it out. So you would eat in the morning, eat your breakfast, and then have your second meal, if you do a second meal, no later than three o'clock p.m. You may find that your sleeping is much better because there are certain food genes that are normally downgraded. So if you upgrade them with food, you're stimulating certain genes that can actually make you more awake. So this late night grazing is terrible for sleeping. Uh, eating too late might be not good for sleeping. So you might want to try having your last meal no later than three in the afternoon. Okay. And don't worry about quantity. Have a good meal. If you do OMAD, just make sure it doesn't go past 3 p.m. And that may greatly help your sleeping. Now, if you haven't seen my video on connecting your sleep cycle to light in darkness, you should check that out. I put it up right here.